terrestrial light tunnel vision. And when I finally believed and understood that it was, in fact, an extraterrestrial, um, no. No. Um, okay. Thank you. Um, I just want to ask you a question about um, the telepathic communication and the nature of it. What is it actually like to communicate with one of these beings telepathically? Like, what do you, do you hear something in your head? Do you hear images, see images, or? I can hear my voice. No, you can hear yourself think. So you can hear to the pill. Sorry. Okay. Habit looking at the people there. Um, I could, I could, I could hear my voice. However, the cadence, the affect, was something that distinguished it other than me. It was no great, great booming voice from the heavens or anything like that, and I'm glad I do not have a proclivity to hear voices in my head, uh, and have heard none since. But uh, I could tell that it was somebody other than me, and I could tell because I felt drawn toward the subject that was sending the communication. Uh, when the J-Rod spoke with me, prior to the bombardment of the images, um, it was something that was part of me, but not part of me. I actually felt non-resident for a moment. It was almost an OBE type feeling. And then I could feel myself pull back and experience the sound. It was, it was physical. It was more real than, than touching an object. Um, and that's the only real time that I felt anything, you know, more physical than physical. Um, did, is there a sort of converse of emotion during these communications? One hundred percent emotion. If he was upset, I could feel his pain. Um, it was. It got to the point. It got to the point where, as I was doing the. the um, uh, needle introductions, I could feel what he was feeling. So as I would inject the needle uh, under the integument and find my proper location prior to, to removing the sample, I could feel the needle entering him. Um, so I could feel his feelings. And that was uh, June of 2003. Bill Hamilton and three others were in the room doing the videotape on this one. Uh, the first videotape uh, was done in September of 2002. And today, Bill was uh, talking about the possible good news that he's been able to negotiate a retirement arrangement perhaps now with the government because he has, I think, felt trapped uh, with knowledge that he felt that the human family should be exposed to, and it's an ongoing story. Uh, I don't think that it is over yet, even if he's going to retire, but we will see. Uh, Bill uh, Hamilton will continue to be the person who stays in touch with whatever communication there will be. And for those of you who would like to read in some detail about the Dan Burrish case and uh, the research work that has gone. Uh, I w would like to, for those who may not know, to tell you that I've done, if I could go to slide, uh, I've done a series of uh, eight uh, reports at earthfiles.com concerning this case. And this is one of them that gives you an idea going back in time over the last uh, couple of years with Bill Hamilton's help and Dan Burrish's uh, permission at distance uh, to do some of this work. I think personally it's an extremely important whistleblowing story. And here is Bill Hamilton's website. He is executive director of Skywatch International and you uh, can keep up with a lot of the research that Bill is doing uh, on the Dr. Dan Burrish and the J-Rod entities as it continues to unfold. And his website is www.skywatch-research.org and mine is www.earthfiles.com. 
Now, according to Dr. Burrish, J-Rod's nerve disease is a serious problem, not only for the entity at Area 51, but is a serious medical problem for the being's entire civilization. And as Bill was talking earlier, we may be talking with time travelers that are us from a distant future in which time split because of a bizarre nuclear or other catastrophic event and that we're caught in some kind of strange time loop in which we are coming back to our present, their past, in order to survive. Or maybe they are extraterrestrials based in Zeta Reticuli 1 and 2 and the Orion system as now technically extraterrestrials. This brings us to one of the, what I would say the real reason that Dr. Burrish says that ETs are here, and that is to harvest genetic material from our Earth life in order to keep his kind alive in the present and the future. Further, Dr. Burrish says Majestic 12 in the United States has made agreements with the ETs to provide medical treatment and allow genetic harvesting from plants, animals, and humans in return for advanced technologies that the United States has been trying to back engineer since at least the late 1940s and may have succeeded on several fronts. This scenario sounds very much like U.S. Air Force Sergeant Jim Penniston's description from the December 1980 Bentwaters Air Force Base incident in England. Sergeant Penniston said that he understood that what set down in the Randlesham Forest were time travelers from the future who were desperate to repair a serious medical problem and considered genetic material from Earth life to be their, quote, band-aids, unquote, for survival. If the biochemist and the military man are correct, is that why tissue and fluids have been removed from animals around the world for at least six decades? This might also explain the references in the top secret ultra interplanetary phenomenon.